and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaia Mitura's Route. In the last episode, sorry, having a bit of tea hiccups here. In the last episode, Michiru was uh, in her unusual self and asked for the comfort of Yuji in the first, first, first thing in the morning. Yuji, seeing the whole ordeal with Michiru as a problem that he wanted to solve, went to Michiru's room after he, before, even before he had went out running. He found that Michiru admitting to not only keeping Kitty Meow, or Rommel as Yuji called him, as a pet, but also that she was actually depressed. Yuji agreed to let her snuggle him, and eventually all things ended out with Kitty Meow, or Rommel, being loose in the school and Michiru trying to deny that she knew anything about it and Yuji eventually working towards helping Michiru keep that cat. Let's continue. A few days later, after loading the vaccine Chizuru got me into a syringe, I decided to inoculate Michiru's mangy little cat. Problem being, the animal in question seems to despise me. Maybe it's picking on the lingering sound of blood, lingering scent of blood instinctive hostility against a fellow predator? Either way, it's a problem. Making a dog behave itself is comparatively easy. They're generally not used to heights, so plop it down on an elevated operating table and it'll be too busy quaking with fear to thrash around. But cats outright enjoy sharply differentiated terrain. Subduing a feline requires different methods. If you cover their eyes and hold them steady, they'll generally settle down. Same goes for most animals, really. That said, there's no point in covering the animal's head in a paper sack and suffocating it. Which leaves me with the most fundamental strategy of all, pure physical restraint. Huh? What was that noise? What the? Flash. Thunder? Uh, oh, hey, Yuji, what's up? Oh, so it's a morning. I see. Good timing, actually. Tell me, do you have a laundry net? The ones you use for washing underwear and whatever? Yeah, I've got one. You want to borrow it? If you got laundry, I can just do it for you. No, I'll be using it myself. Don't worry about it. Hmm? What's this? Don't tell me you're embarrassed to have me wash your underwear or something. That's not the issue here. I need a net to minimize potential damage. Are you going to lend it to me or not? Damage? Damage to what? I mean, yeah, I'll lend it to you. There's no need to get all snippy. Alright, there you go. Sorry, I appreciate it. So, what are you washing? I'm not washing anything. Alright, see you later. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Don't tell me. Huh? A male brasserie? Yuji's wearing the notorious male bra on a daily basis, but he's so ashamed that he washes it secretly? Is that what's going on here? Oh, I'm on him. I've got, I'm getting the impression that I've left Amanu with a fairly serious misunderstanding, but I have other priorities that take pre pre precedence right now. I can correct her delusions at a later date. I would like to see that, actually. It would be an interesting see sight, I think. Well then, even among trained veterinarians, many have difficulty handling cats. Strays in particular tend to bite and claw. I need to be careful. Taking a pinch of silver wine powder from my pocket, I rub a little onto my fingertips. You're around here, aren't you? Come on out. I make a conspicuous rustling sound with a bag of powder, and before long the cat wanders out of the bush, bush, brush to investigate. I bend down and hold out my hand. Most cats have a habit of sniffing at the fingertips when they are made available. The black cat is particularly fond of me, but the scent of the powder does its work. It walks up cautiously, bringing its nose to my fingers. And in that instant, your fate was sealed. Ow! Taking advantage of the cat's momentary carelessness, I plug it up off the ground by the scruff of its neck and toss it into the laundry net I borrowed from Amani. Some would doubtless take exception to this strategy from the perspective of animal welfare, but I plan this out fairly carefully to ensure the least possible risk of lasting harm to the creature. As for those of you who, are st who still have complaints, I'll listen once you've liberated every pet on earth from their collars and converted their America to vegan diet. Until then, surely you have better things to be worried about. 
Calm yourself, animal. I mean no harm. It's a simple vaccination. Sometimes there are side effects, but rarely worse than a high fever. You won't die. Trust me. Well, mm, that's right. Go limp. Not like you can escape anyway. Well, here goes. I take out a n that nylon cosmetic pouch from my pocket. Naturally, there's no makeup inside. This just happened to be the ideally sized, inconspicuous way to store a certain pen-shaped syringe. Taking out the item in question, I carefully jab the needle into my furry foe's flank. Good boy. Don't worry, it'll be over soon. Relax. What are you doing to kidding me out? What? Hey, Yuji, what's the big idea? Animal abuse is not okay. Damn, I was completely off guard to think I'd let you of all people take my back. The disgrace is unbearable. Go ahead, kill me. Ah, no, I'm not gonna kill you, no killing. But don't bully that guy, you understand? Apparently agitated by the arrival of its owner, the black cat violently rips open the net and leaps to freedom. <sighs> Look how mad he is! What did you do to the poor little guy? Jeez. Nothing bad. Don't worry about it. You wrapped him up in a net and you're telling me don't worry about it? You think that's sorry excuse for an explanation? He's gonna fly with me. Next time you try this, you won't get off that easy. <laughs> for some reason, I find myself answering Mitsuo's questions with the cosmetics bag and syringe held by him behind my back. Yeah, I get the message. Sorry about that. Convey my apologies to your cat as well. It's not like he's my cat or anything. All right, kid meal, let's get out of here. Wow. Seems I've reinforced the cat's enmity toward me. I haven't done myself many favors in Michiru's book either. In retrospect, I might as well have told her the truth, but the words just didn't come out. Maybe I've been spending too much time around the girl. Her pseudo sundra seems like it might be rubbing off on me slightly. Well, that's all well and good, but what do I do about this net? Ah, uh, Kasami-san. Hello there. You seen a man around? Yes, um, yes I did. Hmm? I'd appreciate it if you told me where she is. Ah, I see, certain. Yes, well, she's returned to her room. I see. Yes, I'll head over there. Um, Kasami-san, well, I know full well that it is presumptuous of me, but please let me say something. What? Kasami-san, whoever or whatever you choose to be, you're still Kasami-san to me. In this day and age, it's hardly strange for a man to wear a brasserie. No, it's perfectly natural. If anything, I understand it's almost strange enough to wear one, yes? I see. So that's what this is about. Indeed it is. Can you provide me with your cup size and such? I'll gladly prepare a brasserie that will fit you perfectly, but I'll need the band and bust. Uh, do you know what those are? Um, the band I'm referring to misses the circumference just under the... Listen, Sashi, that was a misunderstanding of Amanis. Pure fantasy. There's no truth to what you're imagining. I understand. I'll forget all about this, but there's one thing I want you to remember, please. Whoever or what you are, Kasami-san, I, Kamina Sachi, will always respect you. I see. Nice to hear. I have to admit, though, the look of pain, determination in your eyes and the way you're chewing your lower lip leave me with slightly mixed feelings. Whoever or what you are, I, Kamina Sachi, will always... What a joke. Forget it, Sachi. Certainly. I'll do that. Amana, you in there? Ah, uh, Yuji, what's up? Need something? The net I borrowed from you ended up getting torn to shreds. Sorry about that. I'll get you an equivalent re replacement later. Uh, no. Don't even worry about that, okay? Yeah, I mean, sure. When it's one made for a guy, I guess there might be a lot of wires and stuff. Only natural for the net to get torn once in a while, right? I don't wear a bra. Huh? I, I didn't say you do. Sorry, I guess I made it sound like you, I think you're wearing a bra, Yuji. Uh, my bad. But you do. Yep. So, hey, what's your cup size? How does it feel when you're wearing it? I'm telling you, I don't wear a bra, woman. Oh, come on. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Well, well, I grab my mother's head and push it firmly against my chest. What do you think? Nice pecs. That's not what I'm asking. Does it feel like I'm wearing a bra? No, it doesn't. 
Glad we've come to an understanding. I'll be going now. Y yeah, but if you decide you want to wear one, I'll pick one out for you, okay? <laughs> oh, poor Yuji. For crying out loud, there are countless varieties of awkward misunderstanding in the, in the world, but this one has really distinguished itself on the mentally draining scale. <laughs> Whoa. Like a cheap LCD screen, the truth changes color based on your perspective. Best to view it from a fixed angle. Find a few sources you can trust and stick to them. Even actions you take with the best of intentions can be easily warped through the misinterpretations of a stray or into strange misdeeds. It happens every day, in fact. I sink into the sofa and heave a heavy sigh. A certain playwright once wrote that any sorrow is tempered if you have a friend to share it. And there's a long-standing British proverb to the effect of wine and friends only get better with age. But is there any truth to these claims? I'm not so sure myself. Let's say you're out on a trip lugging around a few bags. You'll probably experience some level of anxiety about them being lost or stolen, right? In that case, wouldn't it be more pleasant to bring nothing at all? All the more so if you're carrying something truly precious. Isn't it better to lock the things you treasure away in a safe box? Or perhaps not to treasure anything in the first place? I'm sitting in the lobby indulging in some after-dinner reading when a miner walks up with Mark and Anto. I lift my eyes from the summer of doors and ask if they need something. This is a little awkward actually. I'm going home tomorrow and I just realized I completely forgot to tell you, Yuji. Nothing wrong with using summer vacation to see your family. I don't see any reason you should apologize to me. Well, sure, but I've been making you dinner and everything, you know. I won't be around to do that for a while. Not a problem. As long as I have beans to eat, I won't die. Okay, that might be fine with you, but it kind of worries me. You've got to eat healthy food or you won't grow big and strong, you know. Are you making light of the nutritive qualities of beans, woman? Oh, Pierre perish this thought. All I'm saying is that eating them all the time can't make a feel. Balance and all things, right? Didn't you ever learn f the food pyramid in school? Piecing together your meals from all the groups, right? Pretty sure they retired that as too inflexible and restrictive guideline. Really? Uh, anyway, that's not really the point. I'm just saying that a balanced diet is important. I see. Well, don't worry about it. I think I'll get by one way or the other. <laughs> Now that I look, Machinus latched on Ma Amami's sleeve. What sleeve? Her small shoulders trembling. Combined with her diminutive frame, she looks remarkably like a lost child at the moment. What's wrong, Machina? You're that broken up over Amami leaving for a while? I know you two are practically sisters, but... Uh, that ain't it. I'm lonely because I won't be able to see you, only chan mm, What do you mean by that? Amani gently strokes Mark in his head a few times and gives me an exaggerated shrug of the shoulders. I can't just leave her on her own, you know. I thought I'd bring her back with me. Oh, how admirable. You're an exemplary guardian, you know that? Those idiots who get caught up playing basketball and forget their children and their car could learn a thing or two from you. Oh, I'm happy that I'll be with Amani, but I'm sad to leave Onichen and Satin True and Yumichen I, can... Yumi I can deal with. What about Michiru? Oh? Who's Michiru? Hold it right there! It's me, of course! Me! Meow! Ah, her. Well, don't know. Pass. Hey! Pass on what? Is that a no comment? Hold on! Why are you ignoring me? Well, you know, she's probably feeling lonely about not seeing you for a few weeks. That's why she's acting all tough, right? Mmm, yeah, sure. She really doesn't sound convinced. Anyway, what are we even talking about here? The girl must have heard her name in passing and reflexively inserted herself into the conversation. The ability to talk for that long without a clue about the topic could be called sort of a talent in its own right. True, the more impressive feat here is a total lack of comment regarding the cat perched on Michiro's head. But that one's less att attributable to Michiro's talent than our well-owned ignoring skills. Seems Amon is going home as of tomorrow. 
And she's taking Machina with her. Huh? That's so. Do take care on the... What? Seriously? Uh, I told you this last week, Michiru. Just forgot to mention it to you, Jim. Ah, uh, now that you mention it, I didn't hear the first thing about that. Wah! No, no, I definitely told you. You probably just weren't paying attention. Really? Uh, maybe... Wait, if you're taking... you're taking Machina with you too? That's the plan, Stan. Oh, I see. Well, yes, you might enjoy yourself a few days. Two weeks, actually. Two weeks? That's how it is, Jiro Jiro. Look after your chance for us. Hmm, I couldn't care less about Juji. Okay, then we got to get go get ready. See you guys later. Later! Well, fine, the door might get a little lonely, but I guess them's the breaks. The rest of us will just have to live with it up, live it up that much more, that much more. Just as the words are leaving Michiru's mouth, Sachi passes by the lobby, sweeping the passage with vigorous movements of her broom. Ah, Sachi, good timing, coming here for a second. I'm coming. Betraying no surprise at this disturbing greeting, Sachi carefully leans over her leans her broom against the wall before trotting over to us, conscientious as always. Yes, Michiru-sama? Is there something I can do for you? Instantly, I believe I'm coming was a rather problematic choice of phrase on multiple levels. Huh? I... well, that's not important right now, yeah? Seems like Amana and Magna will be heading home tomorrow. Yes, the two of them told me as much. Okay, good. Anyway, it's going to get a little lonely around here with Evan, so I was wondering if you could get us some party supplies. I see. Party supplies, is it? By which you mean playful items such as plastic glasses complete with nose and moustache? Or perhaps those brightly colored conical hats? Right, right, right. That's what I'm talking about. That sort of stuff gets things going more than you'd expect. You know? Yay! Buffalo game! Or whatever. Suddenly. Well then, I'll purchase a number of Duck Soup Co. Grouchy Kun Model 4 Deluxe Nose Glasses. Wow, that was a heck of a... Make sure you get four, okay? One for me, one for Yuji, one for you, and one for Yumiko. I beg your pardon, Michio Summer, but... Huh? B -b what? The money? Don't worry, I'll pay. I know things can get ugly if you're not clear about that stuff from the start. Uh, no, it's nothing as dubious as that. As a matter of fact, I happen to be returning to my relative's home tomorrow as well, so I believe three sets of glasses will be sufficient. What? Seriously? Why? There are a variety of complex circumstances involved, but to summarize in a single sentence, because they asked me to. Oh, yes, there's nothing we can do about that. Can't just turn them down if they asked. Got it. Oh. In that case, the three of us will have to take it easy at a maximum intensity. Two sets should be plenty, Sachi. I'm not going to partake. What? Uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Two? It'd be obviously be better to have plenty of spares, right? I request four sets. Um. Well then, how many should I prepare? Four sets! Two. Suddenly, two sets to shall be. Ah, you just decided things based on some kind of pay order! There's an order of precedence in all things, Mitchell Summer. However, I will obtain four sets for safety's sake, provisioning only two initially. I hope that will be sufficient to assert your fears. Well, true. Good enough of what I said. To Yes, that it worked true. Yes, in that case, I'll let go and send my shopping at once. Seems like it's going to get a good, good bit quieter around here. Well, yeah. Hey, it's not like we'll be all alone in this big old dorm or anything. We got Yumiko after all. Mm, Yumiko, Yumiko, eh? Well, better than nothing, I guess. Whew, there we are, all set for the trip. With beautiful timing, Sakaki enters the stage left with an enormous suitcase. An overseas vacation, perhaps. Michiro watches in utter shock, her mouth flapping in a manner strong reminiscent of a stunned trout. Oh, you're taking a vacation as well, Sakaki. That's right, as of tomorrow. Hang around here all year, around gets rather stifling, don't you think? It's only two weeks, so I'll be back soon enough. <laughs> Oh, what's the matter, Masushima-san? No, 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 nothing at all. I'm departing tomorrow, so I'd better go get to go to sleep early tonight. 
Meet you, my friend. Yes! Seems like it's going to be just you and me for a while. Yeah, it's a... well, yeah, whatever. It's not that I want to be alone with you. In the first place, a teenage girl and a boy alone under the same roof is just abnormal, right? In that case, should I leave as well? Huh? If you're feeling anxious, I wouldn't hesitate to lodge at my workplace for a while. Don't want to make you uncomfortable. No, 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 you don't have to do that. Jeez, it's fine. Just don't think I'll let you get away with any funny business. Hmm. Two weeks isn't too long. If you find yourself unbearably anxious, I recommend simply holding up in your room until the others return. I'm sure you'll be able to handle a little solitary confinement. I said it's fine, it's fine, so just um, shut up already! As I'm setting out for my daily marathon the next morning, I discover a strange little scene. Mitsuru skulking around the area in a blatantly suspicious fashion. She scuttles around the courtyard, keeping low and hugging the wall like a cockroach, shooting cautious glances all around her. Even for her, this is fishy behavior. In particular, the black cat riding on her head adds a distinctly surreal flavor. I'm sincerely glad the girl was born well past the witch hunting area. I decide to observe in an effort to determine her objective. Meow. Eek! Quite down, kitty meow. Well, I'm telling you, this isn't the time. What is she even doing up at this hour? I did once observe her heading for the sea around this time, but I'm pretty sure she was looking for her cat. And at the moment, the animal in question is certainly perched on top of her head. In other words, there's something else going on here. Perhaps... This strange behavior might not be the usual Michiru. I don't mean that in a figurative sense. Maybe the other Michirus emerged. Achoo! 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 The exact nature of this little ceremony is unclear to me, but she's wandering around the area, restlessly making freakish little noises. The girl's never exactly normal, but this is particularly odd. Might it be the other one after all? Michiru, my friend. Impressive vertical, Michiru jerks up into the air with a shriek of surprise, retreating a good meter in a single bound. Kasami Yuji, why are you here? Right back at you, Machusima Michiru. What are you doing up at this hour? Well, Kasami Yuji, you know, I, uh, um, I wanted to feel the wind in my hair, so I came. Out here. Yeah. There's no wind today. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, okay, then I got cramp school. Uh, survive. Oh, cram school at five in the morning. Very zealous. What's what's the name of this early bird educational facility, if I might ask? The five a.m. seminar. You can call it a.m. sem for sure, or maybe five and a. So that's a lie, right? That's a lie. Then what's really going on here? Nothing at all. It's really nothing at all. So um, please have mercy. Please leave. Well, this certainly isn't the normal Michiru, but it doesn't feel much like the other one either. Don't tell me this is the arrival of Michiru 3. I beg of you, Kasami, said, take your leave here of here at once. It's dangerous. You must take a make haste. Try telling me what's so dangerous. If I'm convinced, I'll do as you say. Um, well, if an earthquake hit, it'd shake. Yeah, it'd shake like crazy. I mean, if we got an 8 on the Richter scale or something, it'll shake your socks off. That applies equally anywhere. Anything else? Also, um, if a fire starts, it'll burn. All the old guys will get fired up. Fired up old guys as far as the eye can see. We are getting nowhere. Think it's time to explore alternative strategies. Let's try going straight to the point. Tell me what you're, why you're really out here. And who you are. Um, I'm me, of course. What are you even talking about? Jeez. Anyway, look, I'm... Ah, patoo, patoo, patoo. Good lord, she's starting spewing saliva in my general direction. Is this really the way young women act these days? Patoo, 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 patoo. Come on, you two kid me out. Wow. Cease this disgraceful waste of bodily fluids immediately, maggot. Even if the god of hydration forgives you, I never will. 
Ah, but I really want you gone! Um, uh, uh, uh. The strong front quickly crumbles into a cramped, desperate grimace. The girl looks about rage and bursts into tears. I suppose withdrawing would be the gentlemanly thing to do at this point. Or even slightly before it, honestly. Alright, understood. In that case, I'll be... Don't care! Just go! No pleasantries, no life! Alright. Uh, Alright then, see you later. I said no pleasantries, idiot! But in the end, that behavior was simply too unnatural to ignore. I temporarily returned as far as the courtyard, but soon doubled back to observe Michiru from a distance. Beginning from a prostrate position, I advanced with the standard JSDF low crawl to the vicinity of my target. As if choosing a sniping point, I moved to a location that affords good visibility of the scene while providing me with the optical cover. Alright, this should do nicely. My view of the scene is unobstructed and I have clear escape routes secured. An ideal observation point. Jeez, uh, always popping out at the worst possible times, I swear. Even as she wanders around complaining about me, Michiro's petting the cat on top of her head. An abnormally dexterous woman, if nothing else. Thank you for your patience, Michiro-sama. Eek! This pattern is interrupted by the unexpected arrival of Sachi. Does she have some kind of knowledge of Michiru's secret purpose? Shh, not so loud! I do apologize. Well then, I'll speak more quietly. Regarding the item in question. No, 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 about that. Uh, wait, just a sec. I, I need to take some deep breaths. Hmm, the item? Seems to be a bartering session of some kind. I've heard that dedicated smugglers are a common phenomenon in prison. Does the same system exist in this school? Please calm yourself, Michiru-sama. Are you alright? Oh, ah, oh, um, I'm, f f I'm f fine. Ball swell, huh? Ball swell, huh? Ball swell, huh? Please calm yourself. You meant all's well, I believe. At the moment, you sound rather like a pink-collar worker relieving sexual frustration through firing of off obscene words in rapid succession in the manner of Kyoko's blog. Who the heck is Kyoko? I do apologize. I only happened upon the site in Sakakisen's bookmarks, so I can't comment on Kyoko's identity. Oh, um, ahem, um, okay, well, um, sorry for making you show up so early. Please do not concern yourself. Fortunately, I was able to prepare the goods you requested. Oh, that effect. Well, then, um, I have. Shocking to think I'd catch my own classmates red handed. For the sake of the future, it would be best to stop this now. Nice try, punks. An unregistered gun deal on my beat. You got some nerve. Hand behind your head and kneel. Yes. Eee! Sachi falls to her knees on the dirtless instructor. I walk up behind her and wedge her legs apart with my foot. Alright, then no funny business. Oh, hold on, why are you here? Didn't you leave? Silence! You're ten years too young to be dabbling in black market weapon sales. You rank amateur. Hurry up and kiss the dirt. Who's doing that? What in the black market? Of course we're not selling weapons! Hmm? But such is obediently follow my instructions, isn't she? Um, doesn't she always? Now that you mention it, she so she does. But if guns aren't involved, I would leave. A drug deal? Alright, a methamphetamine test seems warranted. Stay where you are while we wait for the kids. Prepare you for a urine test. Yes. Don't agree to that. The answer is none of the above. We're not doing anything wrong. Hmm. Is what is what she says true, Sachi? Yes. Mr. Rusama and I were not conducting illegal business of any sort. I see. Sorry about that. You can raise your head now. Yes. I was asked by Mitsuru-sama to purchase a certain magazine. What's more, the delivery was to be at exactly 5 a.m. on this very spot. Ah, you don't have to tell him that, okay? Buying a magazine? Surely you can handle that much on your own, Michiru. No, well, yeah, that's true, but, um... It seems she found it too awkward to purchase herself. Awkward? What's awkward about it? Explain. Here we are, the items she requested. That's it. I take the magazine from Sachi. 
The cover is a nauseatingly sparkle abomination featuring the prominent headline, Beloved Bear Beautification, an outfit straight from the marvelous military. What is this thing? Okay, forget the rest for now. First things first, I need to annihilate this company. Oh, you're going to destroy it? With your bare hands? That sounds about right. Bare knuckle justice. Alright, Sachi, let's go. We're going to bring down that company with our fists. Yes, with our fists. Oh, hold on! Where do you think you're going? It's five in the freaking morning! Mm. Oh, true. Lapse in judgment on my part. Well then, what's this rag supposed to be? Mitsuru Sama asked my opinion on what sort of clothes Judy would enjoy seeing a girl wear. I thought the matter over from many angles, my conclusion, as you value practicality over design and app apparel, Kazami-san, the military style is doubtless to your liking. What? I don't want to wear word! As we were aware that a magazine along these lines existed, I was sent to purchase it. And in an attempt at secrecy, we decided on this early morning delivery. Uh, uh, yeah. But since Kasamisen himself stop, was stopped by, I suppose the magazine of service is no longer necessary. We might as well ask directly and settle the matter for good. Yeah. Kasamisen, do you have preferences regarding female clothing? Not particularly. I see, Michiru sama Apparently he has no particular preferences. How very nice that you found your answer. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Well then, I have preparations for my trip that need attending to, so please excuse me. A face bright red, Michiru bites her lower lip and quivers visibly. I don't quite understand the situation, but she also seems to be pers perspiring heavily. A stomach ache, perhaps? Michiru, my friend? Oh, what is it? Oh, and before you ask, my stomach's just fine. Perfect. Yeah. Out of silence, Michiru refuses to even make eye contact. Michiru, let me ask you something. What now? What exactly is a beloved beret? Shut up already! How the heck am I supposed to know? It's not like I was looking at the magazine for your sake or his, uh, or his reference or anything. That's totally not it for real! Got it! Ptoo, ptoo, ptoo. Qua, ptoo. The marvelous military, is it? I pick up the abandoned magazine and jot down the address of a certain rotten publisher with insufficient respect for the gravity of military affairs. A few hours after, everyone who is leaving for summer vacation gathers in the courtyard outside dawn. Okay then, Judy, I'll leave the rest to you. We'll bring you lots of souvenirs, won't you, Jen? I'm good with any kind of Yashuhashi, as long as it isn't cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, you're so freaking noisy, Battle Bond. Hey, Makina, we're about to leave. Don't go starting a fight now. It's not my fault this girl keeps hopping over and over about the freaking cinnamon. Come on, I'm not hopping. Was it really that annoying? Well, whatever, no biggie. Alright, then we're gonna get going while the going's good. Watch your back out there. I know it'll be lonely, but do try to be brave. Mwah. After throwing a kiss, the girl saunters off. Magna follows in her wake the memorial to Amana's shock. Well then, I'm about ready to take my leave as well. Did that magazine prove useful? Well, uh, yeah, I'm super helpful. Sure, so yeah, it's all good. Hurry up and enjoy your trip. Hurry up? I see, Michiro sama If cleaning your room proves troublesome, please feel free to contact me. I, Kuminasachi, shall immediately rush back on a temporary basis to beautify your room to then return once more to resume my vacation. Too hurried! You don't need to do that, okay? Take it easy! Easy! Yes, certainly. I'll be on my way now. Naturally, I'll be return bearing gifts. Not to worry, Sakagi. I don't need any souvenirs. Excuse me, don't be rude. Even I have the common sense to purchase a few knickknacks. Um, uh, what kind of souvenirs would you get, Yumiko? What do you mean, what kind? Perfectly normal ones. A glow-in-the-dark skeleton keychain or something of the sort. Hmm, sounds pretty normal. I told you so. No need to worry. I'll bring you back a nice tapestry. Well then. Meet your room. Your room was pretty dreary, come to think of it. 
That's so not true! Don't go trying to decorate my room with the tapestry. Probably just one of those weird triangular flag things they sell in a tourist trap. Weird? Uh, no, um, weirdly stylish. I'd love one. Heck, five would be great! Just for future reference, which you do, most people refer to triangular flag things as pennants. Six for Machusima san. Alright, well then goodbye. Good for you. Sakaki's got a kind side, doesn't she? Seems like she's going to buy you, buy you one more than requested. I really should have just blurted out of the first thing that came to mind. Alright, might as well head back to the dorm. We'll be alone for a while. But there's no reason that has to disrupt our, into our normal route, hmm? When I turn my gaze on Michiro, I discover that her cheeks have flushed an alarming shade of red. Running a temperature, perhaps. What's wrong? Again with the sudden fevers? You should really consider seeing a doctor. Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, you're right. Business as usual. B b best regards. Fine? Really? You're acting pretty strangely, considering. I'm not strange. Okay then, I'll be heading back to my room now. B b b bye Wow. With those words, Michiro clomped off into the dorm in a repeat of her imitation goose-stepping march. At the time, I thought it was it a fairly casual conversation, but that was a misjudgment on my part. Michiru spent the rest of the day holed up in her room. That wasn't too alarming, but the exact same thing happened the next day. Struck me as odd. Still, I figured the girl had her reasons. In the end, Michiru didn't even show her face until a little afternoon of the third day. And that's where we'll end this episode. So, until next time... Take care.